Welcome back to another video. In this tutorial, we're going to install CrowdSec on our web server and also in our WordPress website. You may be asking uh, what is CrowdSec? In short, CrowdSec is a fail to ban alternative on the steroids. <clears throat> you can read more about CrowdSec on their official website <clears throat> and uh, find every information that you may want to know. But in short, it is a crowd sec, uh, it, it is a crowd-based security to protect your online services. So in order to install CrowdSec, you can follow their official guide by clicking the get started in, here in the documentation, but also I created easy to follow simple documentation on my platform. So let's get started installing CrowdSec. So first we need to install our repository and you can copy, uh, copy and paste all the commands uh, from the documentation below. So when we install our CrowdSec, I will be back. So now when we have our CrowdSec service installed, we need to we want to add our server to the CrowdSec of console. In order to do that, we need to create free account. I will leave the link in the description below and where is it? You just need to go to app.crowdsec.net and you will create a free account. So let me log in first. And here, when you are in this dashboard, you need to add your instance and you need to copy this key. And we're gonna paste it in our terminal. Enter the password. All right. Now we need to go back to the browser console. We need to accept the server enroll. I'm gonna accept it. And after that, we need to go back to the terminal and restart the CrowdSec service. So just type sudo systemctl restart CrowdSec. Okay, once we restarted the CrowdSec, we want to add the WordPress protection or we want to install the plugin so it can communicate with our CrowdSec server. In order to do that, we need to go to our WordPress website. We're going to add new plugin. We're going to search for CrowdSec and install it and activate it. Once our plugin is activated, we need to go to the settings. For the local API, we need to type HTTP slash localhost on port 8080. For the authentication type, we need to add the bouncer API key. And in order to install the bouncer, we need to copy this command. <clears throat> we need to go back to our terminal clear the screen and we're gonna type sudo and we paste the comments and here we have the bouncer api key we just need to copy this api key and here you, you just paste this api key for the bouncing level we have options to disable bouncing you can also follow the no normal bouncing that crowdsec is making decisions but uh, what i found useful is the flex bouncing that means it will show the captcha window for the real visitors but it also reduces the false positives so we're gonna enable the flex bouncing and we're gonna save changes then we can test the bouncing 
our IP is whitelisted because it is our server, so the result is bypassed. That means the bouncing is working. In uh, theme customization, uh, you can edit the bouncing page, you can edit the text, you can uh, hide even the CrowdSec information. And in the advanced settings, if you are on a Redis or a Memcache solution, you can enable also the Redis and Memcache solution here. So once we installed our WordPress, we need to go back to the CrowdSec console. So now back in your uh, CrowdSec console, we can see we have uh, our new server that has uh, 27 scenarios and two bouncer. First bouncer, if you follow the guide, you install the firewall bouncer and also we install the WordPress bouncer. You may be asking uh, what are the uh, scenarios? Basically, scenarios are collections of known vulnerabilities that can be exploited in the wild. And uh, when you go to their hub and you browse collections, you can see there are too, too many collections and also for every service that is running on the server usually. For example, you can, uh, you can add the collections for uh, local privilege escal escalations, for light speed. If you're running Ma Magento server, you can add that. MariaDB database and many, many more. Endless SSH. And you can just browse and install any of the collections. In the guide, I usually install only those, those collections, but on your server it may vary depending on the services which you are running. Okay, now we go back to our console. And as you can see, we already have some alerts from uh, my servers that I have in the CrowdSec. And basically, these are the violations that you can see in the real time that somebody is trying to get into your server. For example, it can block HTTP bad user agents. Also, here on the Nginx server, it has uh, basic DDoS protections. If you go over the limit, you just block them. Also, SSH uh, brute force attempts, IP table scans for open ports on your web server. And also, as you can see here, it already blocked the new CVE from Fortinet. So yeah, I really recommend uh, using CrowdSec instead of fail to ban because of several reasons. CrowdSec is uh, open source, like fail to ban, but it offers uh, better protection. It has, uh, it is a crowd-based decision. That means all of the servers that are running CrowdSec, they share the same decisions for the IP. So if the new IP is compromised on any other servers, you're going to be secured against that IP and the type of attack. And also, the best way to support CrowdSec is every open source project. You can even subscribe to the pro plans. That means you will have a third party blog list subscriptions. You can add the users and also you will get dedicated support. And when you support open source project by subscribing to their plans, it just will make sure the product better for everyone. So if you like this video, please comment down below. If you have any technical questions, feel free to ask me. I'm happy to answer all of your questions. And yeah, stay tuned to another video. Bye bye.